Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. So what we uh, discussed uh, last time was uh, briefly the um, dioxirenes where we discussed the mechanism and also the sheep oxidation etc. And then we started uh, looking at the uh, transfer of oxygen or nitrogen via oxazoridines. And uh, we discussed that uh, how uh, reactions such as hydroxylation, uh, amination, epoxidation, etc., can be carried out using oxaziridines and different kinds of oxaziridines that can be prepared. And depending on the uh, substituents that are present on the uh, oxaziridines, there is a possibility of. Uh, maneuvering or uh, selectively doing uh, nitrogen uh, or oxygen uh, as electrophiles transferring them to the nucleophilic uh, substrates such as enolates or enamines, enol salyl ethers, simple double bonds and uh, like that electron rich uh, molecules. Obviously, electron deficient olefins do not react easily with such with oxaziridines. And uh, now we will go further and see how we can make use of this in a chiral fashion. So, what are the N sulfonyl oxaziridines? As I discussed last time, that preferentially people use N sulfonyl oxaziridines more popular than other oxaziridines, and one of the most uh, uh, useful uh, oxaziridines is uh, uh, this type where you have an uh, aromatic ring on to the carbon uh, of the oxaziridine and N sulfonyl group which is present here on the nitrogen. Now this is an achiral uh, oxaziridine and this can be utilized for um, reactions with um, either um, achiral substrates or even chiral substrates. So one can make from the chiral substrates uh, enolates or uh, any of that kind enamines, enolates, enol salyl ethers and then react with this and transfer oxygen onto the molecule. In a similar fashion uh, even this type of uh, uh, N-sulfonyl oxaziridine has also been utilized. It. Now these are both achiral uh, molecules uh, whereas one of the most uh, highly uh, cited and used uh, substrate which from cam camphor is this particular oxaziridine which is very useful and leads to uh, very high optical induction or asymmetric induction and uh, it has been has it has been popularized by Franklin Davis as I mentioned earlier. So you can easily start from the camphor and prepare this uh, highly uh, reactive and sterically hindered camphor based uh, oxaziridine. Now one can um, prepare chiral enolates that means enolates from chiral substrates and you can use achiral oxaziridines. I mentioned to you that uh, uh, oxaziridine of this type which is achiral can be utilized for transferring oxygen to a chiral enolate. So this is the part of the uh, enolate which is formed from this substrate which is again camphor based substrate. So as you can see that if there is a nitrogen here and then SO2 which is part of the camphor based molecule and then you generate or uh, attach this particular part of a, a ketonic type of molecule then there is a possibility of a deprotonation here. This 
hydrogen can be deprotonated and you can make the corresponding enolate of this type and which can be like this. Now there is a possibility of uh, somewhat like this and since the large part of the molecule is on this side therefore the small group which is hydrogen goes backside. So this is a favored possibility of an enolate where the hydrogen the large group is um, coming towards us because the backside is having steric hindrance of this type. So therefore the hydrogen goes backside and R group comes from this side and now when the uh, oxazeridine is reacted the uh, reaction occurs from the uh, lower side that means from the bottom side the, the, the olefin is flat hydrogen is backside this path is uh, backside and then uh, this enolate and R are cis to each other and the oxygen is transferred from the lower side and once oxygen is transferred from the lower side the geometry of the uh, hydroxy groups comes in this fashion. One can see very easily that you have here say you get a ketone here like this and the hydrogen is backside so you have uh, like this where the oxygen is coming below. Now if oxygen is coming below and if this is backside and the R group is in the front this can be rotated further and this is can be equal to a ketone here and now we can uh, imagine that we have uh, we can remove this and redraw to see that this particular molecule is very similar to this. So basically what uh, is done is uh, you rotate it here so that the R group which is coming towards us goes into the plane this is in the plane in if that happens then this hydroxy group which is in the plane will come towards us that is how it is it is shown here. So basically um, the, the main thing that is happening is that that enolate ion is um, formed in such a fashion that the R group which is the larger group is towards this side towards us and the small group goes behind because at the back side the, there is a big steric hindrance due to this large uh, camphor based group, camphor based substituents and that is how and as you can see that the, the hydroxylation that has been um, uh, introduced that has been uh, the hydroxy group that has been introduced is, uh, uh, is an, uh, having a um, chiral center at this stage and if we hydrolyze this then we can get the corresponding alpha hydroxy ester. For this diastereomeric ratio which is shown is actually for this molecule and you can see that it is 20 is to 1 so only very small amount of the corresponding other uh, enantiomer will form during this process. Now there is another uh, pyrrolidine methanol based chiral auxiliary that also has been used. Now this is the uh, auxiliary in which this part is actually the chiral part and it is introduced with uh, a ketone like this. So one can easily prepare it say one can start with uh, you can start with this and if one takes the corresponding chloride here then we can make this by taking the, this nitrogen based nucleophile to attack onto this uh, acid halide. Once this substrate is formed we can do the LDA uh, that means uh, deprotonation 
of this proton here there are two protons we can do the deprotonation and we can make the corresponding enolate and then react it with this oxaloridine to introduce the hydroxy group here. So as you can see that if we take uh, LDA lithium diisopropyl amide you introduce the hydroxy group in this particular fashion with the enantiomeric uh, uh, induction being at this stage like this. On the other hand the same substrate is taken and the base is uh, sodium hexamethyl di disilamide actually it is it is like uh, hexamethyl hexamethyl silamide that deprotonates again in a similar fashion and it introduces the oxygen in a different way than the corresponding lithium diisopropylamide. And both the cases the diastomic excess or diastomic ratio is very high 97 is to 3 and 96 is to 4 and the yield is also fairly good. Now how does this happen? We should see that like in the case of uh, lithium as a counter cation when the deprotonation occurs when the deprotonation of this hydrogen occurs from here the also oxygen of the OH is also deprotonated and we have the lithium here which is coordinating to both the oxygens. And Due to this the lower part of the because this is alpha oriented this is alpha oriented or it is at the bottom of the double bond it is towards the lower part of the double bond therefore the nucleophile attacks from the top side which is what is C, C orientation C means now we have something like S configuration we talk in the case of double bond as C configuration so we have the top part if you can see that it is C configuration it is rotating in the anticoclockwise. So it is from the top the hydroxy group uh, interacts and therefore what we get is this product. On the other hand when um, the uh, sodium base is used then sodium is a counter cation and sodium is a counter cation which is not a very um, good in terms of uh, chelating as much as lithium plus is there. Now we also have uh, enolate which is having uh, this type of uh, counter cation where there is a sodium plus and uh, here, here also the OH is deprotonated and you have a sodium plus. Now in comparison to lithium plus the sodium plus uh, the anion is uh, more separated and therefore there is a repulsion dipole repulsion and therefore the two anions as uh, opposed to the lithium type of thing where you can have coordination to both the oxygens there is no possibility of uh, such coordination in the with the sodium plus therefore there is a dipole repulsion and the molecule turns that this particular part of the um, auxiliary turns in such a fashion that now this is beta oriented. So this part and this part are away from each other and during the process where this was alpha it has now become beta. So therefore the beta means the above part. So the top part or the beta part is now blocked because of this particular group and therefore the attack of the nucleophile occurs from the lower side that is alpha side. And that leads to the formation of the alpha hydroxy group which is eventually uh, let leads to the alpha hydroxy acid. What is done is that after the transfer of the oxygen as I showed you earlier you can hydrolyze this particular carbon nitrogen bond here by means of 2 mole uh, sulfuric acid 2 molar sulfuric acid and then you can cleave it and get the corresponding acid. So basically it is an alpha hydroxy acid which is formed which is formed 
in a chiral uh, fashion uh, by this use of auxiliary which is pyrrolidine methanol chiral auxiliary and deprotonation and reaction with oxaziridine. We can also look at the uh, other auxiliary, uh, oxa, um, auxiliary such as this uh, oxazolidinones kind of uh, substrates of these two types and you can use the uh, lithium uh, bis trimethylsilyl amide we used earlier sodium bis trimethylsilyl amide you can also use lithium and you can deprotonate here and once the deprotonation is done then of course uh, the corresponding enolate reacts now since these two groups here these two groups here are beta oriented therefore the hydroxy group comes from the alpha side. On the other hand if one takes uh, this as a alpha oriented substituent the uh, group which is transferred comes from the beta side. So opposite, opposite to this side and as you can see the diastermic ratio is very large and yield is also good. Obviously this is the major product this is the major product in both the cases and the minor products from here the minor product will be this one and from here the minor product will be this one. So uh, we can control the reaction in such a fashion that we can get the major product depending on what kind of oxazolidinone we use it. Now how do we make camphor based oxazolidine molecules uh, which will be useful for um, reacting as uh, chiral oxazoridines for uh, introducing alpha hydroxy group uh, next to uh, a ketone or any other um, oxidation. We start with camphor sulfonic acid which looks like this and react it with PCl5 so that we get the corresponding sulfonyl chloride that is SO2Cl and then it is reacted with ammonium hydroxide so that we get the corresponding sulfonamide. Now this sulfonamide is then um, uh, heated in toluene in the presence of amber list catalyst which is an acidic resin catalyst and uh, there is a uh, apparatus which is called a Dean Stark apparatus which continuously removes the water from the reaction medium. Uh, it is required that we uh, continuously siphon off the water from the reaction medium. Uh, otherwise, the product that is going to form, that means if this amine here, sulfonamide, condenses with the carbonyl group here, then we get this particular intermediate. But in this particular intermediate, under this uh, amber list catalyst condition, we can get protonated and further hydrolyzed and go back to the starting material or even it can go back to the sulfonic acid. And therefore water has to be uh, continuously removed uh, by the use of this Dean Stark apparatus. And once this particular product is formed then this is reacted with oxone under basic conditions. Since there is a methyl group on the exocyte therefore the oxidation of this uh, Imine part of the molecule occurs from the endo side that is from the lower side and then we get this particular reagent which has a complete endo attack of the oxygen. So this is how camphor based oxazepidine is prepared. Now we can also see that this type of uh, camphor based oxazepidines can be utilized that means before the introduction of the camphor based oxazoridine I had discussed the uh, enolates to be formed from chiral uh, auxiliary based molecules. But now what we are doing it is we have uh, uh, this substrate of this kind where enolate is formed from this achiral substrate. So if we can uh, say for example you take this substrate. Uh, uh, this enolate here like this. So this is a chiral. So we have a chiral 
enolate that reacts with the with the chiral oxazoridine chiral oxazoridine and the transfer of the hydroxy group occurs from the uh, lower side and we get the 84 percent yield of molecule with 95 percent enantiomeric excess finally. In a similar fashion here also one can introduce the hydroxy group from chiral uh, this alpha side and can get the corresponding alpha hydroxy lactone here or alpha hydroxy ketone there with high enantiomeric uh, purity. Now how does this happen? Now why should it happen in uh, from the lower side? As I mentioned earlier that the enolate attaches to the lower part of the oxazoridine with hydrogen group that is smaller than R1 group being backside and the larger group comes toward this side and thus the oxygen is transferred from the top and that leads to the formation of this molecule here where the hydroxy group has come from the top. As one can see that this is the same as this that means we just turn in such a fashion that R1 group goes on the top the hydroxy group will come at the bottom. Now if we have a substrate like this when there is no hydrogen but there are two different substrates like HR1 and R2 and if uh, R2 uh, is smaller that means R1 is large then R1 group will come towards us and between the two the smaller R2 group will go on the back side and accordingly the hydroxy group will come from the top when the smaller group is on the back side and the we get the chiral molecule of having configuration of this kind as the major product. So you have a major product. So we have seen now two types of uh, things where we have uh, one a chiral oxazoridine other is chiral oxazoridine. Now what can also be done is uh, interestingly that uh, the uh, olefins can react with uh, a, a molecule of this type here one can take even as a chiral uh, substrate here uh, for example of this kind. And, uh, when, when this is reacted with an olefin of this kind which is highly electron rich olefin is like an enamine. What is formed under these conditions with uh, dichloromethane and methanol is uh, a final product which is formed is basically this and this can be converted to the corresponding uh, actually it should be hydrogen here. Hydrogen. So what happens is the epoxidation takes place from the alpha side to form this alpha epoxide because this group which is a large group which is a beta therefore the double bond forms an epoxide and then this particular lone pair of electron pushes it out and opens up the epoxide to form this alpha hydroxy uh, ammonium ion here to which methanol attacks. So the methanol basically is attacking on to the uh, ammonium ion here and this positive charge is neutralized to form this where the methoxy group has come from the beta side. Now under acidic conditions here trifluoroacetic acid this oxygen is lost and you can generate the similar type of uh, ammonium ion but then instead of that means we get this here I will not write the lower part of it but then you have positive charge here and hydroxy group here and of course the remaining part. Now this is the one that is reduced with triethylsilane. It is a reducing agent and that introduces the hydrogen at this stage. So, uh, so
So, one can convert uh, a molecule of this kind to uh, a natural product which is of this type where there is a hydrogen and the hydroxy group has been introduced in a highly stereoselective fashion. Now we uh, will start uh, with another uh, interesting uh, oxidation which is oxidation at the unfunctionalized carbons. It is called as Barton reaction and then there are variations of a Barton reaction they are called um, different types of uh, so reagents are utilized and therefore we will group them in Barton and related reactions. Now what is a, uh, unfunctionalized uh, carbon? It is very easy for uh, say you have a ketone and uh, if uh, this hydrogen which is alpha to the carbonyl group or if we take a symmetrical substrates and both the uh, alpha carbons are equally uh, available. So the alpha carbons are basically activated because of the carbonyl group and therefore it is easy for functionalizing the alpha carbon. But if we have uh, a substrate of uh, somewhat like this, we have a substrate where we have a hydroxy group here and uh, the hydrogen that we want to functionalize is away here. If we want to functionalize uh, this particular carbon atom then we can oxidize this to the corresponding aldehyde uh, and then uh, one can easily prepare the um, aldehyde of uh, this type and you can functionalize here you have a hydro. But functionalizing here it is not that easy. That is what has been done by Barton, DHR Barton who got the Nobel Prize uh, in 1968 and uh, we, he has shown how uh, this type of uh, nitrate esters can be utilized for the uh, functionalization at unfunctionalized or oxidation at unfunctionalized carbon. So we will um, take it up uh, this particular part uh, in the next class and uh, in the meanwhile you can uh, go through the oxaziridines and uh, look at what are the advantages and disadvantages of that reagent. Thank you, we will see you next time.